Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, uh, stick with us. We're going to have quite a show today. I have quite a guest with me today, Sharon Nassett. Uh, you might have seen Sharon, Sharon some way, shape, or form. You've seen her at her meetings one way or the other. And she's very, very active in, in her community, uh, in state issues. I mean, she's very, very active, and, and you're going to enjoy this. But in fact, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be focusing on the whole issue of uh, the CRC, Columbia River Crossing. You've been hearing about this bridge thing for years. It's been sort of hanging around our necks, about 140 to 180 million dollars, maybe 200 million, really, for those, <laughs> for those hidden costs Ooh, that we no. don't hear anything about. And we still don't have a bridge. We don't even have a plan for that matter. And so Sharon is going to give us an update on the whole issue of CRC. And, uh, and so I think it's going to be quite a show. So, but before we do that, first off, I'd like to say hi to my dear friend, uh, Dave Mendenhall. Dave is looking at the show. As you know, Dave has been to, been here producing here, he and I, for, for years. And uh, unfortunately, he had uh, just a minor little setback, but he'll be back on the show. Dave, uh, welcome to the show again, and I'm sure you'll be back. You have a good one. I'll be seeing you soon, okay? Now, along that line, let's get right into the show. Again, Sharon, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. Appreciate it very much. It's a hot and, topic. Oh, very much so. Very, very much so. Every but day you, in the paper. Yes. But, you know, before we get into that, there was quite a uh, an interest in the, in the media shows today. You know, the Meet the Press, the CNN, mm -hmm. the Fox, and this, that, and the other. Uh, former Governor Romney was on, and he and his wife were talking about, you know, the post-election thing. And, and uh, they were, uh, then sequestration was on. They were talking about the whole issue of sequestration. And uh, where that is, and this, that, and the other. And, you know, I've been sort of keeping up with it. I'm sure you have, mm -hmm. too. And the public at large have been looking at that. First of all, saying, what is sequestration? What does that mean? Basically, the bottom line is very simple. Uh, basically, it's just trying to figure out government has gotten to the point that it's just costing us too much. Everybody's getting their, 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 their own fair share, if you will, the entitlements and this, that, and the other. And people are trying to put a cap of some sort. But uh, the, the most simple way of doing it would have been to just take 10% across the board for everybody. That would have been simple, just 10 percent across the board. But I, not I'm necessarily. Just, just so an opinion, smart, but 10 yeah. percent across mm -hmm. the board. I mean, there's got to be some fat in everybody's piece, you know. Oh, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But 10 percent across the board. But that was also including Congress too. I'm talking about the Senate and the House. <laughs> oh, so I you're mean, going for meat? I'm going for the meat aspect of it. But you know, in all due respect, when you start thinking about taking monies out of anybody, people are thinking about. You, 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 you're lowering my standard of living. They've already put that money within their own way of life. Mm -hmm. Got me? Mm -hmm. So consequently, Congress, you would think that if they, if they were really going to do this, uh, they were going to be a part and parcel of this whole issue of, of cutting into their wages like 10%, but they didn't do that. And that's both, no, Republicans, put into their... that's both Republicans and Democrats, okay? I think the only way we can maybe resolve this issue in, in, in the future is that we need a whole new crop if you will, <laughs> a congressman. Both. Well, uh, we we've got a pretty we had a large turnover the last several yeah, years. We, we had turnovers. Yeah, every but day. It, was, it wasn't enough to say, well, okay, fine, we're going to be included in the sequestration. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's where I'm kind of coming from. Yeah. Because everybody's kind of thinking about, wait, well, hey, look, I got this retirement thing coming in, and I don't want to, I don't want anybody messing with this stuff. And when I go home, my wife or my husband is going to say, do not mess with our money. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the people's money, though, mm -hmm. but our money, okay? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be representing the public, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're all having some tough time. We were already cut, if you will. In we were cut, our, our and they weren't. Of they were yes. cut. We were cut. The people were cut mm -hmm. big time. I mean, it, it, tough times, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, so as far as I'm concerned, the, the whole issue of sequestration is, is, is really a, a serious situation. But then bringing it home, when you start thinking about bringing it home, I think the only thing that identified with sequestration from the state of Oregon standpoint is PERS. Ah, fair, very, very and we've been, similar. We've been, we've been kicking that can down the road every year for mm -hmm. quite some time. You're not going to do anything with PERS or cutting into PERS because the people who are going to be making the decision on PERS receive PERS, receive PERS. whether it goes to the Supreme Court, whether it be the district court, whatever. Everybody's receiving PERS. If anything, everybody's trying to add a little bit to their PERS by maybe going and getting a professorship at Portland State or, or anywhere where you can get these PERS kind of a deal. So you're not going to be able to mess with PERS at all in the state of Oregon. So I, don't need, so, so I think mm -hmm. the public should should be told once and for all, 
purge is gone until these people are gone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, another solution would be... I was going to say, uh, different people dealing with they, it. They have to be different people dealing with it. The Republicans have to get their act together, control the House, control the Senate, and control the governorship. Otherwise, it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Fair? I agree. Okay, good. I think the only we're going to have to agree on some, aren't but, we? But we <laughs> might be able to get a few pennies out of the whole purge deals right now because you oh, know yeah. I'd say the majority of the people who are on, are on purge, the big monies, are out living out of state. So I mean, they, their checks have to be mailed to them. So maybe we can be, maybe they wouldn't have a problem raising the price of the postage, if you will. Oh, I thought you were going to gonna say we check. wouldn't pay for postage at all, and they'd have to come in the state and pick it up. Well, that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. We could pay for postage. So maybe we might be able to pick a couple bucks there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's about the size of it. Yeah, okay. Okay. it's not really going anywhere. Nobody's All right. dealing with it. Oh, if not manner. that, maybe a, a sales tax, and then you know that that gets kicked around, uh, kicked down. But I think there's a possibility we're going to have a sales tax in this in this Ooh. state because we we're so short. Because the bottom line is that we're, with the well, we're short because there's not enough people employed paying into it because of the job. Right. So sales tax, people which, coming in and enjoying the state. Will have yeah, to be you'll, more. you'll get more out of training people than you will that. Yeah. You know, somebody that has uh, a year and a half of training. Right. Uh, it's most likely to get a job where they have upward mobility. Right. They aren't going to need assistance, and they'll get raises. Right. And we don't look at the fact that when people are over the age of 21, 25, those are the people that need the most amount of training. Mm -hmm. Instead, our economy goes up and down, as I say all the time, right. because we base it on what 13 and 14 year old hormonal children are going to do with their future. Mm -hmm. And education needs to be a, a level of education, not an age. And by the time that, you know, I meet people all the time that are your cashiers at the Fred Meyer, and this is one lady, she's compassion as could be and I always see and I say you know I, I like how nice you are to the old folks and she says I always wanted to work as a nurse's aide and da 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 da, -da and I wasn't smart enough along and here she is in her early 30s mm -hmm. and she thinks she's going to spend the rest of her life cashiering which she might mm -hmm. and she's always wanted to do something different mm -hmm. well that other job we need people doing those things mm -hmm. And so we don't do anything to educate people. Well, why aren't we doing this in school? In, why, why aren't we, why aren't it, we, but it's not about school. It's not about those that are in their hormonal levels. It's about looking at the grown adults who are actually going to put their energy into something that for a year or two in training will actually go into a position okay. where they could pay pay. I, I agree with and you. And then the taxes are I agree coming with you. in. But, but, but again, at the same time, we, we are sort of guaranteeing within our society that during those formative years, you're supposed to be able to get an education, K-1 to K-12. I mean, that's that's what we, we've we guaranteed these folks to do that. Well, then I think everybody... Oh, we're not for, doing it. For the last 50 years, close to 50 years, we have people that have graduated out of our high schools. Failures. Who can't read and write. I agree. Okay. I agree. Those are the people that we need to go back to and say, level of education is high. We've known since the 70s, two years of any kind of training or two years of a college, most likely to succeed, most likely to have upward mobility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yet, it only takes two years. And yet, we have this person with this earning power from the age of, of 18 to 45 mm -hmm. who's staying in a minimum wage job. Mm -hmm. They're not meeting their goals or aspirations. They're not having the life to give to their children. Mm -hmm. And they would be paying back so much higher in taxes, giving back more to society. You know, one of the things about children and education is you want um, teenage kids or children or older to read and do more. Right. They need to come home to their aunts and their uncles and their cousins sitting around reading and having better jobs right. and stuff. But instead, those people who have been failed by the system don't have that to offer. So when they come home, they're not seeing that from them. They're not hearing that education just for the sake of education. Mm -hmm. Oh, you suggesting then maybe that the you suggesting maybe that we should do away with the whole education system and let the private sector just have them come in. Absolutely and do not. I believe in public. Oh, you suggesting? Oh, wait a minute. 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 Charter. I hear you. No, I didn't say charter. The, I didn't say charter. About edu I, I didn't say charter. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. let, let's say, for instance, a person gets up at a certain age. They go to Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer has a training facility aspect of it. They got cashiers. They got pharmacists. They got the whole mm -hmm. nine yard. They train them, and then they're right there. They got a job. Exactly. Or you, or you go to Intel, or you go to uh, Nike, or you go to whomever. They would basically train these folks, and they get they got good wages and engineering. Is that what you're suggesting? Is it do away with the education system so we don't need it? So therefore, we can put the monies in purge. Oh, don't be picking on me. We're old friends, Bruce. You're not um, good friends. Yes, I know. <laughs> now, I, no, I, we're looking for a solution. No, no. Yeah. I'm not, I might be a uh, little bit, my, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. but the bottom line is that it is a problem. It is. It is a problem. People aren't being able to meet their own yeah, aspirations, and they aren't able to meet their own needs, yeah. and they're not 
happy about that either. Right, right, People right. want to be able to right. succeed. Right. Well, you know what? In all due respect, we can we, we can definitely have this discussion. Yeah. And, and then more. Yeah, I, I just want to give but the viewing audience an opportunity, the yeah, opportunity to see that this lady here has been around. I want you to know Sharon has been around, and she's been very active, and she pretty she definitely knows what she's talking about. I had to, I had to set it up, if you will, so we, could, <laughs> so we could really talk about this whole issue of CRC because yes. trust me, you're gonna really like what 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 she has to say. And by the way, we're going to be opening up the lines, if you will, Sharon. Is that okay with that you? That sounds wonderful. We're going to open up the lines. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to hopefully that people will be listening to what we're doing and what we're talking about. And if they got comments to be made about some of the things that we're going to be discussing, they can. They're welcome to call. call. There'll be a phone number on the screen that you can call because we are live today on Sunday. Okay. And then naturally for futures, they'll put that on there too. The, this particular show will be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that if you you know if you if you got friends that, that that don't that don't have Comcast, you can call them up and say, okay, fine, you can get it on YouTube, and YouTube is a very popular event there, and uh, we'll we'll give you the address on the screen too. Okay? Oh, that sounds All right. great. Well, now you know, let's sort of take it right off of the editorial page that was editorialized by the Oregonian, the state's only newspaper, right? For I mean, the statewide newspaper, and they basically threw out the deal on the editorial page in the Oregonian, the Agenda 2013 progress report. Now that the new year is well underway, how have lawmakers and other state leaders fared in tackling some of Oregon's most significant problems? I mean, there were a number of areas. They said fix PERS, tax structure, grow jobs and income, build the bridge, protect and expand personal freedom. They got a number of things over there. But the one, the one thing that we're going to be focusing on is the build the bridge comment. Let mm -hmm. me read the first paragraph to kind of, kind of oh, set the tone. Please. I thought that was interesting. Okay, this is basically what the Oregonians said. And by the way, they support the building of the project. And it's interesting. We wanted some comments on that. Uh, let me read this first paragraph. It says, replacing the I-5 bridge over the Columbia River has tested the regions with like no other pu public works project. More than a decade and $160 million in design and permit work have gone into making the $3.4 billion Columbia River crossing a reality. They really didn't define the 160 million. And now the legislature of Oregon and Washington must do their part in financing 450 million each to help pay for it. But each state must overcome the objections of some who question whether the CRC would significantly relieve congestion and, and, and argue the project's light rail line from Portland and to Vancouver is, un, is unwanted. Mm -hmm. I would like to have gotten some comments. I did call up the, or, the Oregonian editorial board, but unfortunately, you know, they don't, they don't identify who writes the article. <laughs> So you don't, don't know who's writing the article. Mm -hmm. you know well, at least that, yes. You know what I'm saying? But um, anyway, the, that's the Oregon, Oregonian's position. They do mm -hmm. support, as you know, they do support the, 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 the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm still trying to find out who. Uh, who, who and why? Who and why. Okay. Yes. But anyway, we'll, we'll leave that alone for this point in time. Now, let's just jump right in it. First off, give them a little background. Give, the, give my viewing audience a little background in terms of how you got involved with the CR, the CR, this whole issue of the CRC and where you are today so we can just get right into it in terms of commenting of a progress report. Let's talk about yourself. Well, um, I've been involved in transportation since about 2000 and came in as a citizen that was invited in the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA. Okay. They uh, are required to come out and say, what's your problem? Mm -hmm. How would you fix it? And then when you come in with alternatives, uh, they are supposed to at least consider them. And those come out of our 1968 civil rights. Mm -hmm. And it's, we kind of have a lot of poster children right now on why we have the civil rights, which is we have some elected officials saying, well, it's going to happen this way or that way because that's what I said. Mm -hmm. Or I won't look at this You're or that. You're talking about the bridge. Oh, yeah, about that bridge. Civil rights is the bridge. It, it's, the bridge is civil rights. It is, the bridge is civil rights. The bridge is civil rights. We have a right to know what's going on in our communities and to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that comes right about our civil rights. It's not about somebody saying, well, I'm the quote unquote okay. mayor or this or that, and this is what's going to happen community. in my area. You said community. Now, where, 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 yes. are you, where, where are you reside? Where do you reside? Um, I live right next, I'm in North Portland, and I'm right next to the I 5 freeway. You are in there. I look at it when I do my dishes. She sounds like a legislative district for Tina Kotek. Do you know her? I do know her. That's Ms. your Kotek. legislator. I know Kotek. Wow. Really, she happens mm -hmm. to be mine too. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, continue. Sorry we just about will that. change. Sorry about that. And uh, so anyway, so uh, that was about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, excuse me. And I was a North Portland Business Association Transportation Chair during the renovation of the St. John's Bridge and um, came into the project at, in 2000 with a original project that was recommended for further study, went through a second process known as the Bridge Influence Area, 
and our project was recommended again for further study mm -hmm. and we made several changes and then we came into the Columbia River Crossing and the Columbia River Crossing is a a group of, of studies that have happened since the, the 80s because the I-5 freeway is over capacity and the I-5 corridor is full and the corridor includes I-205 from I-5 in Vancouver and I and 205 to I-84 mm -hmm. so it's over capacity so until this time all of the studies have said we need to add capacity across the river mm -hmm. and it needed to be heavy rail freeway road um, or arterials and some form of transit mm -hmm. and so uh, for quite a while the idea that we were adding capacity came up then all of a sudden the project kind of got shanghaied and turned into a we should replace our current bridge current bridge structurally sufficient meets all requirements has 60 years of life left according to the 205 um, evaluation by Oregon Department of Transportation mm -hmm. no required repairs can be seismically retrofitted for 50 to uh, 150 million dollars for a 500 year event mm -hmm. um, 95 percent less lifts by upgrading the rail bridge Bridge is valued between replacement of five hundred million to a billion dollars, hmm. and so far there's been nothing wrong with it. Well, the bridge itself has arterials coming up to it that funnel into it. Of one of only two crossings, the Glen Jackson on the I two hundred five bridge is also over capacity mm -hmm. and has been at capacity since nineteen ninety nine, not long after it opened in eighty one. So having two bridges that are both over capacity and having fewer bridges in similar sized cities of the same size, mm -hmm. the idea that we have other bridge locations that have already been identified in regional transportation plans in both states since the 60s would be to the west, the Port of Vancouver, Port of Portland, following the 1907 rail line. Well, in 1907, they were going to make a bridge with rail and vehicle right there. Yes. And it had always been planned that it was going to do that. They even had the drawings for it. And what happened? They, well, the city of Vancouver and the city of Portland were kept pushing the rail and pushing the rail, and the rail people were going to do it. And then all of a sudden, the, the, city of, uh, the two cities decided, eh, they're never going to do it and gave up. Mm -hmm. So they went ahead and built a bridge without it. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we, we the, the stayed existing bridge. the existing rail bridge, and we stayed with uh, a, a ferry for a while longer until the 1917 bridge, another 10 years mm -hmm. later, was built. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it's interesting to know that the states of Oregon and Washington fought so much back and forth that members of the business community in downtown Vancouver came over to Portland with a bag of gold and said, come on. Let's lead the, 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 the government out of this. Let's just mm -hmm. build it ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they had to actually catch up with the business people. Now, that same experience also happened with the Lewis and Clark Bridge mm -hmm. and with the St. John's Bridge, where citizens got up and started building the structures well, themselves. Were these local folks, local businesses? These are local businesses. And as opposed to Wa and WashDOT and ODOT, actually Washington and o or, Oregon, mm -hmm. did not support that issue? Well, the departments of Oregon and Washington Transportation had to do with the gover governors and the right. government. And what had happened time, right. is they just couldn't get their act together. Mm. Okay. And what really happens is government does best when it, when it leads from behind. Mm -hmm. Citizens got out and said, this is what we're doing and you guys can follow. And unfortunately, the lack of leadership that they continue talking about having to do with the Columbia River Crossing is it, it, it has just gone back and forth and, and have no resolution. As you said, $160 million and we don't have a bridge. We don't know the height. We don't know what's affected. We don't have the impacts. We don't have the benefits. Uh, no study was done about the $100 million that will come out of our economy for tolling. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, was studied having to do with now they're finding out that it's not 20,000 jobs, but 2,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, they found out that it wasn't uh, the indirect job loss and direct job loss was never measured. So you take out 89 businesses with what they're talking about doing and mm -hmm. affect almost 300 pieces of property fully. Well, if you take out 89 businesses, those people are going to be losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them will locate. Okay. So the net of the jobs will be a list. Right. So then it, it carries over to indirect. 
Yeah. That would be the person that you would be buying goods and services from that you no right. longer have the money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you do it, you have to have direct, indirect, and I can't think of the third one, but... Mm -hmm. So that was never done. So now when they're going forward with this process and they, they have the Columbia River Crossing project out there, the local preferred alternative is replacing the bridge that has structurally sufficient bridge with light rail, which has not been able to receive maintenance and operations funding from Washington, the state of Washington. The voters voted it down. Hmm. That right there is most a good rec reason. Most recently. most recently in uh, November of 12. Okay. To 12. And them voting that down means that we should have a supplement. And here is the large issue, Bruce, is a supplemental environmental impact statement, because we're doing an impact statement. What does that statement. mean to the average layperson? Okay, National Environmental Policy Act says you're going to go into a community mm -hmm. and you're going to do an impact study on how benefits and impacts of a project in an area. So you have the environmental impact statement, and the environment is not just the air we breathe, but our working community hmm. and how it affects everything. Okay. The entire Makes environment. Sense. Makes sense. Okay, an impact statement. And they're supposed to list all the benefits and all the impacts of a project. And that should have been done early on, right? Well, that is what, well, exactly. And they're supposed to compare them with a range of alternatives okay. thoroughly studied, okay. including through construction. Was that done? Well, considering the project we have right now, it hasn't been done. It hasn't been done. And how could it have been done on other alternatives? Hmm. Majority of the projects were removed without being studied or vetted. Hmm. This one, we still don't know the impacts because we don't know what the height is. They're adding new properties every day. Hmm. And the 116 bridge height is not about... Um, it's not about the on and off ramps. It's not about anything but the fact that the light rail cannot go above that grade very well. And when they want the light rail stop to stop in downtown Vancouver, mm -hmm. closer to the bridge, it won't when it's at that grade. It's already coming in pretty high. Mm -hmm. So they may not get now, it to land. What about the businesses? I mean, there were several businesses that were going to be affected. And I guess that was oh, the businesses in downtown Vancouver I'm are about just the, the building, as far as signing the, against the, it. The, the height of the bridge aspect of it. It's my understanding there were several several businesses, if you will, will have to be either compensated to be moved on the other side, if you will, well, mm -hmm. uh, up, up river, right, as opposed to down river. Oh, oh, you're talking about the height of the bridge the for, the bridge. for yeah, marine right, traffic. Right, for I'm marine sorry, traffic. I thought you were yeah. talking about the height of the bridge. Because, no. well, in downtown Vancouver, some of the businesses are going to have a huge wall in front of them with the light rail over it. Mm. And so I thought you were talking about that. No, um, no the uh, everywhere in the nation, bridges are getting higher. Right. Some of them are even taking current bridges and jacking them up. Our current bridge was actually jacked up to put that little hump in it. The 1917 bridge was flat. Mm -hmm. And this one was bumped up, future traffic. Um, th we have, uh, they didn't do a, a good study, and they have found that there's as many as 500 people that will lose their jobs. There's as much as 11 businesses that are affected. And the mediations that they're doing to mitigate it um, isn't going to be bringing jobs or things in the future for us. Not well, saying that... Something. You know, mm -hmm. I'm hearing this, and I'm trying to represent the folks that are looking at there. Mm -hmm. And you've got such a good background aspect of it. But, you know, as I think about what you're just sharing and then the number of years, in fact, I was going to ask you that, how far back does this go when they first started discussing this whole idea of this 140, uh, the, the 160 C million bucks that we've been... Oh, the CRC started yeah, CRC. in 205, 205. as a three-year project. A three-year project. For $50 million. For $50 million. Well, and tell we're $160 million eight years right. later, and most of what the, we the, were supposed the, to accomplish question, hasn't been done. The question I want to ask is, okay, fine. It said $50 million, the business said, okay, fine, mm -hmm. we're going to build this bridge. $50 million bucks, and we got to do an environmental with, impact statement. Within, within mm -hmm. three years, okay, aspect of it. Now, the, the, this, this government, if you will, the state of Oregon has a budget on a, an annual budget, mm -hmm. right? And, that, that's, and they have to pretty well project how much money they need, if you will, based on the revenue that they come in, they take, take in, i.e. taxes, right? Right. Okay. So then now you think about building a bridge. Well, you would think someone would have some idea in terms of how much it would be co would cost to build a bridge. So therefore, it would be consideration in the budget, where do we get the money? Mm -hmm. But for some strange reason, no one said, uh, no one talked about the monies that were going to be raised or where they were going to get the money before they threw out that $50 million. I would have thought that they would have said, okay, fine, yes. 
first thing we got to do, are we going to have the money to build the bridge after we get the consultant piece done <laughs> with the $50 oh, million? Bridge, dollars? I'm, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm just a late person, and I, I'm doing the paying. Yeah. I'm the public. I'm paying. Yeah. So tell me, why was it, why, should it not be, <clears throat> what is it, chicken before the egg? What, what's the deal here? Well, you know, whether Someone or not they were going to have financing later, here, here is what I know. They never had We are on a budget. planet that there is plenty of money for things that are competent. And if this bridge idea was actually going to help the economy, help with congestion, help with freight, you probably saw what uh, former Governor Victor Atiyah said this morning in the paper. Oh, yeah. He said it, it, it was Ridiculous. insane. That's right. Insane. Republican and Governor Victor Republic, Atiyah. Yes, and he, and he said that the idea it's going to relieve congestion uh was a fantasy well you know the other thing i was going to ask you is that okay they've totally reconstructed the entire i-5 if you will during the court in that corridor mm -hmm. in this area right from in vancouver don't from you think that the all the way up to 78 don't you think the consideration of a, a new bridge should have been also inclusive during that particular time well at that time they knew that there was nothing wrong with the bridge what do you mean? and here is the thing when this study started in 205 short break here. Go on. they had 12 bridge options only three of them had anything to do with replacing the bridge. Wow. And they were looking at alternatives downstream, upstream, next to what's there. And no people got involved. And, and then whoever came in took the project apart and started making inaccurate and false statements and turning the data around. Hold that in. I like that inaccurate and false statement. We're going to take a short break and okay. we'll be right back and get a better explanation. And by the way, stick to your phone. We're going to be right back. Get on the phone and call in and get into the discussion. It's a very serious one. We've got budgetary situation. We've got constraints. We've got problems, folks. Be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, again to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm here with, uh, uh, with Sharon Nassett. You know, we're talking about CRC, Columbia River Crossing, and there are some issues that we still have a divided house, if you will, state of Oregon, i.e. through the Oregonian, has made, made the statement that, in fact, Oregon's got their act together, they've got that money, <laughs> and they're saying, hey, then Washington's going to have their act together, and they're going to have their money, and Sharon is here telling me, no way. I mean, Washington, no way. And she's going to give us a little background on that piece aspect of it. It's very important. I might add, too, Sharon. Um, welcome again, Sharon. Thank you. To the show. I might add also, too, I had Senator Chip Shields here. Oh, Who uh -huh. was here, who basically represents your area. In fact, uh, there are two representatives that he represents. Uh, that's part of his team. And that is uh, Lou Frederick, right? Mm -hmm. State Lou's representative been Lou Frederick. Absolutely against this. Against it. And then uh, Beautiful Tina Kotek, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I had the, the senator right here saying that, in fact, his team and himself were against the bridge. He now, what's has that said, all about? Now, Chip Shields talk, has... Tell me about has, that. What's the deal now with Tina? Let's talk about Tina for a moment. Okay. Let's talk about Tina. Is she Coates. for the bridge or not for the bridge? Uh, now, from what she the is 100% said, for the bridge, has refused to hold any town halls, has refused to have any conversation at any meetings that she does have, does not have monthly coffees, and will not meet with her own constituents from her own areas or professionals and comes in and out of the state of Oregon making comments that are inaccurate and absolutely false on a regular basis and refuses to look at data or change it. Um, has well, let, wait, let, down let, 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 let's be fair now. Let's be fair to Tina. Now you got to understand 
she's more in a she's in a more national pro, uh, uh, spotlight right now. But she, national isn't who she's yeah, representing. But, but she's representing the, the lesbian and gay community aspect of it. You know, she's money. Okay, <laughs> he costs he's costing people out there money. We're all having a tough time. Businesses are having a tough time. People are having a time making a living at this point in time, and we're paying some guy what a hundred and some odd thousand dollars a year, right? Mm-hmm. As far as I'm concerned, we need term limit, if you will. We, got, we need to start kicking some of these people out of here. Well, positions. I'll tell you. This is ridiculous. Blumenauer has refused to have any events. Oh, he won't come here. He won't, he won't even come to any, he won't even have town halls or regular events in our neighborhood. In North Portland and Northeast, except for Chip Shields, who, who does right, show right, up. Right, right, right. And except for Lou, who does show right, up. Right, right, right. The others don't even have events. Don't, well, they're the, what, they're afraid of their own constituents they, they, they were all asking them questions. They were all commenting coming about the former governor, uh, 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 was it Romney talking about the four, was it 43% that he didn't identify? With I thought it was 47. 47% that he didn't but, identify. Well, in this particular, his district is the 47%. North North Portland and this that and that. Oh, but I'd, say totally it's ignore, like, I'd say it's more he, like eighty five percent of us. He totally he's ignore us. those folks in that particular area. He mm -hmm. don't relate to anything. In fact, he's on the band, he's on the marijuana bandwagon now. See, well, now that know, might relate. Yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, he's on the marijuana band. We, we got problem with reference to representation. Uh, but then I guess the other point I would make in regards to, to Oregon's side, they got a little heads up, if you will, because as you know, the last State of the Union uh, by President Obama, uh, uh, the Kitts Hoppers were sitting in the in the balcony with uh, with, with, with President Obama. I think Obama's that had wife. more to do with health care. Might have been, been health care, but you can rest assured he probably said, do you happen to have a, an extra $400 so $4 billion you know what? to I, put this bridge he, together? He, he, he's a little He's a little sold on it, but in private, he has said he's not. He thinks it's stupid. He wishes he had never got himself. Governor Kitzhaber made that statement? Oh, yeah. It's been on straight line. It's been all over that. And, and so here's he's, the thing. So he's against this piece? No. He's a foreign against He knows it's a turkey. He knows it's a bad deal. He knows he shouldn't have uh, uh, coughed up saying that he would go with it, and he's still marching along because that's what he does. And he won't have any town halls. And he is the least likely person to be seen by the media or seen in public. Gee whiz, I mean, boy, what opportunity is that the Republicans have out there to maybe find someone to oh, you keep governor? Putting... <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, it's political. I mean, that's ah. what it's all about. But then, but then when you start thinking about this whole bridge thing, who's going to benefit the contractor's going to benefit. They don't live in Oregon. They don't live well, in Washington in many ways. We're, we're going to have six fact, to nine years should, of construction that should be a requirement. on That should be a requirement if, in fact, they build this bridge. Uh, it should be 50% of the construction should be going with Washington and 50% should be going well, to Oregon. can't do anything about construction. Those construction workers that come here are less than 2,000 people can come with the contractor. They could come from... South America, they could come from anywhere with the contractor. Well, we don't, they don't even have to guarantee that any of those jobs well, are here. I, I'm not a protectionist, but in this, yeah. this time around, people are hurting right now. Businesses are hurting. People are hurting for work and whatever. As far as I'm concerned, I want 100% of the jobs to be here in Washington and Oregon. Now, what's the problem well, with that? Here's the thing. You're going to have seven to nine years of construction on I-5 with a great big sign north of I-5 saying go take 205 missing all the businesses from Hazeldale down wow. you're not going to be able to get down into that area SR-500 is not going to be connected to I-5 anymore and you're going to have non-stop congestion wow. damaging all of Jansen Beach and all of these businesses and stuff well, and, and, and you have an opportunity we have an opportunity to go one mile to the west, and whether you do a freeway like Third Bridge, or you do Cascadia, which is a, a shorter freeway, right. or you do the alternative of common sense solution, no flaggers on I-5, no ruining of the fort. They're taking an acre and a half to two acres of the fort. Look how they've been dinking around with at the airport. And 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 no removal of homes, no re uh, no removal of businesses on Jansen Beach, no flaggers on I five. The fact that they would tear up I five when there is nothing wrong with it and no emergency before they have another way around or a third bridge. It's like, did none of them go to engineering school? Hi. First you find a way around, then you take out the current oh, bridge. Wow. So it, it it's not about that. It's about. Um, they haven't dealt with the toll estimates. They haven't dealt with the uh, the what it will do to our economy, the lost jobs. Um, people need to be riding the Coast Guard right now and telling them the problems with it. And the fact is, is so when we were talking about the tolling, so as the tolling got higher and higher, a six hundred million dollar off because they kept saying the traffic would go right, up. Right, right. Well. 
That doesn't mean we don't need another bridge. You see, since the 80s, the I-5 freeway has been considered over capacity and failed. And they had to put on metered ramps because it had failed. So we have more traffic than we should have in that area. That doesn't mean it's going to support a higher toll mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that's, that's the missing mm -hmm. thing. People say, well, then why still a bridge? Because since the 1980s, we have had congestion problems that drain our economy, that keep us from growing. We have a thousand acres of buildable land out in our Rivergate area, 500 new acres coming in on Hayden Island, right. and the gate and the Port of Portland, Port of Vancouver are right next to each mm. other. Mm. So infrastructure in that area brings us jobs. Sometimes good, well-placed infrastructure brings us really good family wage jobs, connects our ports and industrial areas. And it, it's like it was in the 60s when you have bypasses, right. takes the freight out of the neighborhood, better for the freight, better for the community. There are times when building infrastructure is better for the environment, whether that environment is the air we breathe or the job we go to. Well, you know, Sharon, we get we get to that point now. We got about another about about another eight minutes or so, and whatever. And by the way, if there anyone else would like to get into this this conversation, even if you've called before, you can call us back. You might put we'll put the number back on the screen. Give us a call. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, it's really about the money, Sharon. We it got, we it got is three about point, the money. We got three point four billion dollars possibility that's going to be going on this bridge. And by the way, there's always going to be some uh, some overcharges, if you will. You got my point. Uh, by about uh, a third say, is what they think. I, I would I would say we're talking about maybe like four or five billion dollars mm -hmm. for this bridge. Well, I would and then we got four, another four hundred fifty million dollars for Washington, four hundred fifty dollars for, for for Oregon, and you know we got quite a bit of deal. And here we are being pushed in Oregon side. We're pushing people to ride. Bicycles. Uh, I mean, do you well, need, you know, I didn't gonna mean to go on the bridge? Uh, I just meant to say, you call. gotta have you gotta uh, have Tiffany Couch come on and talk about these numbers. Let's do that. Let's do the that. Money. Get Tiffany. We'll get Tiffany on. Okay. Because that's important. We got a caller on right now. Caller, you on the air? Your question or comment, please. Well, mostly comments. Uh, I, I follow the, the light rail and the, the agenda that's pushed these things for years, and it's amazing how similar the what I call the invasion in Vancouver and Clark County is yes. to the similar. Similar efforts, especially in the Clark, in the Clackamas County, because after the two previous votes went down and they stopped having elections, and even after two people were recalled, or three people in Milwaukee over the light rail issue, okay, uh, Metro Metro and their committees in the South Corridor they proceeded to just simply ignore the voters and wow. and they declared that. That they acknowledged in writing, and there's documents that Cla the Clackamas County was not going to accept light rail, mm -hmm. and and then they decided to simply pursue it anyway with the uh, with the intent to avoid the voters, and they mm -hmm. literally discussed it, and so they proceeded to sh change the committee a little bit, make sure they got unanimous support, and right. you know, and back in wow. 2002 uh, when they acknowledged that it wasn't appropriate, in 2003 a year later they voted unanimously to make. Uh, light rail, the preferred alternative for yeah. Clackamas County, yeah. and, and the rest is history. So here, we, here the same things happen all over again, but even more offensive is all the things that were used to usher these previous lines forward, whether it's the West Side Max or West or, mm -hmm. or Clackamas County light rail, the same rhetoric is used, the same uh, invented benefits, Wow. Mm -hmm. And all the fallacies that were wow. used in very offensive same, same. ways, and, and, and now it's all over again. I wow. mean, the federal wow. matching money, you know, well, we can't pass that up, and, and everything else. So it's, it's a, this project is on steroids. Wow. It's Milwaukee Light Rail on crack, if I may, <laughs> uh, because, it, it, because it is so, uh, so costly and, and, and unwise, and, and it, it just staggers me how some of these legislators, when they were wow. voting for it, use the same rhetoric, uh, but pretending as if they discovered something new about light wow. rail and this project that made it justified when there's nothing new about it whatsoever. It's the same same nonsense yeah. and yeah. perpetrated the exact same way. All right, thank you very much, Carla. That was that was quite some that was quite some background. Well, and it, and it is, and here and it is rather disgusting that we know that the citizens have voted not to do maintenance and operations. And yet, we have elected officials on both sides of the river saying, oh, just shove forward no matter what the voters have had. The same people when we send... Wait a minute, I got a problem with that. Is it not, is it not supposed to be a government of the people, I was going to say, people, why are we in people, other countries fighting for them to we, have democracy and, and, and if we are respecting democracy And voters here. elected these same individuals 
And I don't think that you need to be on What's one. What's the deal? I here? think that if you are on the Oregon side and the Washington voters voted a specific way, as an elected official, you still have a right to respect their vote, whether it's in your state right, or not. Right, right, exactly. And so it is absolutely appalling. And if you don't understand what that vote is, then you should put something that's less ambiguous on the, on the voters thing and ask them directly, straight up. Um, right now in, in the city of Vancouver, they have uh, elected officials that are going against the fact that they brought in over 12,000 people that want to put a vote of light rail on the Vancouver ballot of Vancouver City Council should uh, Vancouver should not spend money on light rail. Less than 60 votes, they're off, and they're still fighting about it's less than 60 votes off, and if they put back the numbers, it would be more than that. And if you know that that many thousands of people, then why don't you just stand up and say, you know, we need to include all these people. Mm. And they're not because it's like right now in Oregon, it's not going through the ways and means. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Many senators tomorrow will be voting in Oregon and they need to say, say no because they want, should say, why isn't this going through the standard procedure of ways and means for something that has money? They're well, going around that. But you know, we, still, we still got major politics, you know, especially during these three or time. It's either... If you're Republicans, uh, you're, you're definitely against it. If you're Democrat, you're for it. No, in Oregon, Democrats have been against it all, all, most of the time. So what, where's the issue? And, and, so and what's the some driving force? The Who's the driving is, force? The driving force right now is the governor's little paycheck book. Oh, and, paycheck give, book. And, and, he's, and they're handing out things, I'm certain. And as many people do feel that, uh, Kotek okay. is... A house leader, mm -hmm. even though she's new, right. because she's willing to ram it through our neighborhood. Wow. And that's right. the only reason that she's gotten house. And a lot of people feel that way. Wow. A lot of people from our district and a lot of elected officials, when you talk to them, they're not happy about that. If you're willing to step on North Portland, you can go someplace. What's up with that? Well, 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 folks, well, here we are. And uh, as you can see, there is an issue. And Sharon, we really thank you for, for giving us an update on, on what's going on with the CRC. Maybe we might get the auditor to come over here a couple weeks from now. Maybe you get, you get in touch with her, would you? Have, oh, have Tiffany, you back yes. On. Because it's very important that we know what's going down, and we really appreciate that. So look, folks, hey, look, call your representative in your respective area. Tell them what your points are. In fact, tell them to go to YouTube and, and get, the, get the comments that were made today, okay? Again, thanks again, Susan. Sharon, appreciate it. I'm just really excited about this thing. Thank you very much, folks. You see, you, see you next week. We won't be here well, next thank week. You very we much. won't be here next week, but maybe we might just carry this show again next week so we can just go and continue on. Have a good one. See you a couple weeks from now. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.